Welcome, Robert. Hey, Phil. How are you? I'm good. Allow me to introduce you. Thanks. Artist Robert Harney started his painting career quite by accident after moving from Boston to the more rustic setting of Mansfield, Massachusetts over 20 years ago. He is a self-taught artist whose raw and versatile talent shows up in his work. Uh, Robert, you've described yourself, as I just mentioned, as a self-taught artist. Have you had any formal training whatsoever? Um, no formal training. I just take one watercolor class, which was quite interesting, I think, for the instructor, probably more than for me. Um, I did get quite adventurous in what I was putting together. Um, the number of students that were there, I think mine came out quite different than what everyone else expected or what everyone else would come up with. So, uh, but that is the only class I've actually taken. I've done a lot of books. I've uh, read a lot of books, um, some investigation on the Internet, things like that. Well, that sounds <laughs> awfully impressive, uh, self-teaching yourself art. That's, that sounds like a huge challenge. Well, I didn't, as it said, like, it was kind of by accident that I even got started on it. So, um, as I progressed through childhood, you know, I, I started out drawing horses and things like that. And I was never paid much attention to it. And it kind of just developed. So, um, I never thought that I'd end up doing this for any kind of length of time. I just kind of got into it and dropped it and got into it and dropped it. So, kind of just came together. Well, so when did you first realize you were an artist? Um, probably about six or six to eight years ago. Um, quite by accident, again, I um, some friends of mine who had some trouble with having children finally were able to. So I took one of the pictures and I kind of drew it uh, in pencil and took it into work because I couldn't get it quite right. Other people saw the painting or the picture that I was drawing and. I uh, loved it and started suggesting I put up a website, which I since have done, um, and commissioned me to do certain work too. So I've been doing that off and on and putting out paintings and doing some gallery shows in between. So that's about when I kind of knew that I was, uh, I had some talent. <laughs> Wonderful. And I will link to your website from this blog post too. So do you prefer to call yourself an artist or a painter? Uh, probably an artist because I, uh, it's not just painting that I do. I love to work in pencil, colored pencil, charcoal, uh, pretty much any medium. The one I started out with is the one I actually haven't done in many years, which is oil. Um, and it's more because of the fact that I, um, because they have such a long drying and curing period that um, I don't have the room to store them. So uh, even though I love doing oils, I just have, don't um, – doesn't fit right now. What other mediums do you work in? Um, pencil, colored pencil, charcoal, I've done watercolors, acrylics. Um, I think that's pretty much the spectrum, pretty close. Do you have a favorite? I like acrylic and I like um, pencil. Um, acrylic I've done the most in because it's easier for me to put up and take down. Uh, I don't have my own studio right now, so uh, pretty much my kitchen work for my, my workroom, so I put it up quickly and take it down. So uh, acrylic, work, acrylic works well for me because of the fact that it does dry, uh, dry in pretty quickly, and I can get the results pretty quickly. So where do you find your inspiration for your paintings? Um, different things. So uh, a lot of heartache growing up. Um, a lot of my paintings have some romantic theme to them, so I see myself as... Uh, Somewhat of a romantic guy, um, so a lot of those come into come into play. And I like a lot of pictures that have symbolism in them. If you look at my abstract, there's a lot of hidden messages in there as well. So, uh, and it really just fits my mood. Whatever's happening during that period of my life or memories that I've had, um, I love drawing animals too. So sometimes I get in the mood to draw uh, different animals. Now, is painting an art? work your full-time career? No, I hope to be able to focus more on that when I get uh, a little bit more independent financially, but right now I'm in the computer field. Okay, and how often do you paint and how do you keep motivated to paint regularly? Uh, I go in spurts. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll paint every day, uh, 
with my kids. Yeah, I know you actually get started till 10 o'clock at night, sometimes till 2 in the morning. So I kind of lose track of time when I get started when I'm really in the, uh, in the throes of it. Um, sometimes I won't do it for a couple of weeks at a time. And, you know, it's, it's just what happens to be happening in my life. So um, when I have time, all the inspiration strikes me. You know, your story is something I love to hear. Just somebody who has a talent, discovers it, in your case, somewhat late in life, and just follows your heart and follows your passion and makes something happen with it. And I think that's wonderful inspiration for other people. What advice would you give to other artists? Uh, don't be fearful. So one of the things that I've heard many times, and I tend to look at it very optimistically, is... Um, don't be fearful because my stuff, my stuff that I put out there shows a lot of emotion. Um, and people think that, or say that I have a lot of courage for putting um, a lot of my feelings out on the line there. Um, but there's no there's no bad artwork. It's really what makes you feel good. Uh, and if you can put something out there that you think that other people enjoy, most people are less talented than you believe. So they'll have the courage to put something out there that really shows you your true feelings or what really inspires you. I like that. I, I think we all could benefit from that advice. Uh, what famous artists have influenced you and how? Um, you can see Dali. You can see in my uh, a lot of my paintings from the ab uh, abstract or the symbolism that shows up there. Uh, Jack Vetriano, who's a very romantic painter. Um, He's got a couple of famous paintings out there. He's born in Scotland, uh, a little bit earlier than I was, but he's um, another person who's, who's really put some pretty inspirational or romantic type um, of paintings out there. I very much admire his work. And someone else who um, I discovered probably about eight years ago, um, Henry Patrick Raleigh was an illustrator back in the 1930s. And some of the stuff that he put out had some of that that old style. It was um, pencil or ink, but it, again, it showed a lot of the romantic side of things. Now, I just dis oh. I discovered you when I was searching for an image to accompany a blog post I had wrote, and I found Forlorn Adia, a yeah. beautiful painting, which I'll reproduce for this blog post as well. What was the inspiration behind that work? Um. I know a few friends of mine growing up who have had some uh, heartache, heartache in their life, um, some friends who were girls, and uh, one in particular who was going through a very bad time. And it, it just, it was, I really wanted to put something together that really showed how I thought she felt. Um, and it was just a de distraught um, feeling, even though, in the picture, it shows her out in the woods, alone by herself. Obviously, uh, this girl was not like that, but she did feel quite alone, very similar to that. Well, it, it really struck me. It jumped out at me, and I know others will like it, too. What do you like best about creating art? The comments that I get back from people, how it's struck their life, are very similar to things that they've gone through in their life how it resonates with them. Um, those are the types of things, the comments that I get back that really make people feel things that are similar to them in their life. That, hearing that type of feedback uh, really, really gets to me. Now, I imagine your paintings are for sale on your website. Yes, they are. And I will link to that. Uh, how, how are you handling the business side of being an artist? Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> I... Um, I I tend to want to make people have my painting, so it's really when people can what people can afford to uh, purchase. So when it comes down to um, the purchase price, I really work with the people who um, you know what, what they can afford. So I, I don't think I'm a great businessman when it comes to that. <laughs> the other side of my life I am, but when it comes to my paintings, I pretty much like to make sure that people uh, if they really enjoy them, they can get them. Well, I like to hear that. I think when you have a talent you want to share, then I like that approach to what you're doing. I respect that. And you also have a video on your site of your daughter. So it appears that your children have artistic talents as well. 
Yes, actually. Uh, my kids are quite talented. Probably, um, if they pursued it more, they'd be more talented, certainly, than I am. But still trying to get them into the art profession. Um, my middle daughter, is, Megan, is actually quite talented uh, vocally. Um, she she's, um, was in the recording studio, hasn't put anything out yet as a single, but has worked with a producer. But um, on the art side of things, they've all put... Um, artwork together and one of the one of the people that I know wanted to purchase some of her paintings so she's well ahead of the game for me. <laughs> well that's wonderful. Um, I'm so glad that our paths crossed and that we could talk today. I appreciate your sharing your thoughts with us. I'm a fan of your work and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you Phil. Thank you very much for taking the time. I know we've been trying to get this together for what, well over a year now? <laughs> so to finally get you live and uh, have you having the patience, I really appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. It doesn't matter how long it takes as long as we're, we get it done, and that's what we're doing now. So thanks again, Robert. Thank you.